Welcome back, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Remet Knives Rhinoceros. Picked this one up off of Amazon. I thought it looked pretty cool. It's a button lock. You got a nice drop point blade here, and it's a medium size EDC knife at 7.32 inches with a 3.15 inch blade. Blade steel on this one is 14C28N. One of my favorite budget steels, it takes a screaming sharp edge and it holds it for a considerable amount of time as well. You got a nice point there for pokey pokey stuff. The blade finish on it is, on this particular one, is like a, a bead blasted finish, which is not my favorite. But 14C is pretty corrosion resistant, so I'm not too worried about it. I've, I've sweated a good bit with this knife in my pocket in the last couple of weeks and I have no problem with corrosion on it. You do have a row of jimping here, and I guess if you held it back like this, you could you could uh, catch that jimping, but I sit up in this portion, which, I mean, I don't really find it necessary. Anyway, you got this nice little scoop right there to lay your thumb. You do have a sharpening choil. It does clear that plunge. Uh, it should give you a little bit of sharpening light before it starts, starts to widen up back here. Now, I paid $55 for this on Amazon, but I have a discount code for y'all. I will have it down in the description, so I'll try to, you know, I have to try to remember that. And that will give you 15% off, uh, which will come to around $46.50. The knife also has a high, you know, decently high flat grind that comes down pretty darn thin. Comes down to around 12 to 13 thousandths behind the edge, so it should be able to perform pretty darn nicely. Let's find out. This is my fourth Remet knife, and one thing that I can say for sure is they know how to sharpen a knife, and so far, hopefully this is the same, all of them uh, have performed really, really well, especially for their price point. Um, that's one thing that I kept in mind anytime I'm, I'm testing their knives. They, they, over, they went over and beyond, at least in my opinion. But... We got a drop point here with a high tip, so I was just kind of trying to do these long cuts, make sure I wasn't going to slide out of the cut. Um, no problem, and it was performing really, really nice, blasting through the cardboard uh, effortlessly, and it didn't feel like it was letting up at all. Now we're going to test the ergos on this piece of birch, and also see how that edge wants to bite into the wood. Um, I was able to do fine curls rather easily, so I started increasing the pressure rather fast. Um, and this is a very twisty piece of wood. Um, and I'm not the best at feather sticking or anything. I'm just basically wanting to test the ergos. And I don't know if you saw me look at my hand just now. Um, where I was landing on the scales, there's a little hump. And that hump was digging into my pinky. Uh, it wasn't the most comfortable, but it wasn't terrible either. I was able to kind of reposition my hand and it, it stopped bothering me. Um, as you see, I had to use the belly because getting that tip up would require me to raise uh, the handle up too high. Uh, but it's still performing nice. Uh, that thin geometry is, is allowing it to blast through the material rather easily. And it doesn't seem to be slowing down so far. Um, uh, I'm, I expect I expect a lot now, and so far so good. A lot of regression going through the denim. Uh, you can definitely feel that uh, that belly biting into whatever I was cutting, and with that extra belly, it does make cutting on a flat surface a lot easier because you can use that belly to start your cut, push it toward into what you're cutting. Uh, into the half inch sisal rope, still push cutting and uh, doing it rather easily. Um, I'm, I'm putting minimal pressure into the rope because my hands are all blistered up right now from testing too many of these knives. And uh, I was pretty surprised by how well it was still performing. I thought I would kind of start to get hung up, but nope, it's still doing very, very well. Um, we end up getting through 51 cuts, which was outstanding, and it still feels like it's pretty sharp. Uh, we'll try, if I remember, we'll test that edge, but um, even if it's not sharp up there in the front, I'm still more than impressed with 14C, because that's, you know, what I do with some of these super steels. Uh, so, very good job for the most part. I like the knife. Uh, they just had that one little issue with the handle. Other than that, A-OK. -okay. All 
All right, now let's test that edge. I've always had good luck with their uh, their edges. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That's pretty, pretty darn nice. All right, now let's talk about the deployment and the action. Now, this is where it's kind of, kind of funny because this it's a button lock, and you know, in order to get the brake on a button lock uh, down right, you have to have it set up pretty good. Now, I noticed right at the back, it's got a pretty, you know, stout detent or perfect, should I say? And uh, I, I saw that they have this that comes up, so I'm, I'm guessing this is supposed to be a front flipper. Now, mine, I I can sometimes do it. You know, it, it's not always perfect for me because it doesn't sit above the scale. So that doesn't give you that much momentum when you're flipping around. Uh, the, the jimpings, you know, I'd say it medium. It, it, it's okay. Uh, I can't do the top. But the reason for the detent dialed the way it is to where it's a perfect uh, thumb flicker and reverse flicker. You can also grab that little window if you want to slow roll it or grab the thumb studs. Well... I, I've only seen, I think, one other knife do this uh, that I can remember, but let me see if I can show you in there. So, I, hopefully I can show you right here. You can see that detent ball, hopefully. Let me shine some light in there. See the detent ball? Well, in the closed position, it falls into a detent hole like a regular thumb stud knife or flipper knife or, you know, anything other than a button lock. And it's creating a closed detent. So, they they describe it as uh, uh, so it won't open you know in whenever it's closed because you're not going to shake this thing out because it's pretty you know stout now it's not overly stout when you're using the thumb studs and mine has a smooth action so it's not something that bothers me or anything um, mine's a free dropper it is riding on bearings nice and smooth but like I said if you like to press the button flip it out you're not going to do that because you have to overcome that detent. Now let's take a look at the handle area. You have a Torx T8 for the pivot and you have a titanium pivot collar, anodized gold on this one. Uh, you have brown, like a canvas micarta. It is nice and grippy. Uh, they are flat scales though with some nice chamfers around. You have two Torx T6 in the back. I wish they would have all been T8. You have micarta backspacer, hidden lanyard post there. Flush screws. Little texture on that button lock right there, and you have a recess spot so you don't accidentally disengage it. Now, during the testing, I, I was talking about a minor hot spot I had whenever I was really pushing down into the wood. Now, you can see these fingers right here, that's where they fall. Well, this, the pinky for me, is sitting right there in this little hump right there. So I didn't notice it until I really started bearing down into the wood and that's pushing down on me like that from the pressure pushing the blade up and it was digging into my finger. So it, maybe if you had a little bit bigger finger, you, I mean bigger hands, you would go behind that. I'm not sure. I can kind of choke up on this because they do have a little flat spot, but you got to be careful with that edge. Now they did an excellent job with the pocket clip. You got a nice deep carry clip that pretty much disappears in the pocket. They inset it into the frame, into that micarta, and they countersunk those uh, clip screws. You got enough ramp there, it's not too much, and it goes in and out of the pocket nicely, but they missed the mark by not making it tip for lefties. I, I don't understand that. You're, you're excluding a part of the market, and lefties could easily use this knife. So that doesn't really make sense to me. You can get it in other colors as well. They have a black micarta and I think a black wash blade and maybe green. I'm not sure. I think it's three different colors. Uh, this was the only one they had whenever I picked it up because these sold out rather fast the first drop. The lockup on the knife, rock solid. I mean, no play whatsoever. And at first I thought these were external stops, but they're not. You have... Let me show you. In the closed position is that stop in. That right there is in the open position. It just looks like it's touching both of those, but it's not. And then I thought these were external stops, but if you look real close, they're not touching the frame at all. So it's still rock solid. No movement whatsoever. No side to side. So very, very good job with their uh, button lock. Let's spine whack it. <laughs> dented up my table very very good job solid now for some size comparisons we have the Ontario right model one and two 
QSP Penguin and Civivi Elementum. And last we have the Remet Handfield Knife and the Volsteed Corgi. All right, now for my nitpicks complaints. I don't love Bead Blast. But like I said, 14C tends to not corrode as easily as some. And uh, I think they missed the mark for not having it tapped for lefties as well, since you can access it left-handed rather easily. Now, it's just going to depend on how you feel about the detent ball system in the closed position. If you like a nice snappy action, I think you're going to like this knife a lot. Um, and also, I would have liked to see T8 hardware throughout. But... At my, with my discount code at the $46.50, can I recommend the knife? Yes, definitely. It performed really nicely. It's got a nice smooth action. And unless I'm really, really bearing down, it was nice and comfortable as well. And it's just going to depend on where your finger lands here. But other than that, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Hey.